What are your specials? What are you after? Oh. We got burgers, cheeseburgers, fries, fried onions, pickled onions, pickled eggs, pasties, pies, and odds. Odds? Yeah, we got first to score, half time score, final score, score draw, five to four, and a cracker nap. Everybody dance now! Sorted. Got any tips? Yeah, go easy on the air, Jill. Download the Coral app and check out our in play specials. But please bet responsibly. Welcome back to York, welcome to the Barbican. It's the second day of this year's 2014 Coral UK Championship. You may be wondering why I'm keeping my voice a little bit hushed. Well, that is because there's been so much going on here today. Remember, we started with 128. Today, we've begun with 88. By the end of tonight, we have to get down to 64. There's been so much action that we're having to record whilst games are still going on. It's almost like the Whispering Ted Lowe show tonight, but we've got a cracking, cracking lineup of chat this evening. There has been so much going on and with me to dissect the action is the chief man from the press room mind what you say when you're around Ivan Hershevitz. Well Ivan before we talk about today's drama let's just round off last night Mark Selby came through 6-0 as the new father so obviously the sleepless night's not doing him too much harm well while he was away catching up on some Z's Rod Lawler was grinding out at 2 in the morning 6-5 against Alex Borg in the old days if a snooker player was mentioned in any sentence with the time 2am, you would have thought all sorts of shenanigans. But Lawler really ground, had to grind it out the hard way. Yeah, good old Rod. He's a, a lovely guy, Rod, but um, he does take his time sometimes. I think the person I felt sorriest for was Hilda Moens, the referee from Belgium, who refereed that match until 2 o'clock in the, in the morning and then was back here this morning to referee a 9.30 match and then had to referee again in the, in the afternoon. So uh, she certainly earned her crust. Well, do the referees get overtime? Uh, no, I'm afraid they don't know. Oh, I think she should be putting in the card for a 2am finish, but good on, good on Rod for getting there. And then turning our attention to today's action, Ken Doherty uh, is here. Now, this is almost the one that got away for him because we all know he won the world title in 1997, but three times a UK finalist, never quite made it to the, uh, to the top step of the podium. But he's turned up today, beat Mitchell Mann, and he's into the second round, joining the likes of Jimmy White and Tony Drago. So it's... Um, it's a, it's a tournament for the old guard in the last sort of day and a half. Yeah, a few of those golden oldies going well. I remember the first time we came to York in 2001, Ken got to the final, playing really well, and then got beat 10-1 by Ronnie O'Sullivan, you know, uh, almost an embarrassing scoreline for him. And then the following year, got to the final again and lost 10-9 to Mark Williams. So he's come so close, but um, you can see how happy Ken was to win today, made three centuries, um, played really well, and um, just chuffed to be in the second round. Well, you've mentioned Mark Williams there and you managed to grab a word or two with him literally uh, after his first round victory. A svelte like uh, Mark Williams, we may say. Mark, 6-1 win for you. Uh, good start. Yeah, it was all right. How would you assess your game? Good. You're uh, coming into this event in a bit of, um, bit of form, a bit of confidence, especially after that good run in Chengdu. Very good. Well, you never quite know what you're going to get in an interview context with Mark Williams, but he certainly made his presence felt in that interview, and uh, good on him for shedding uh, two stone, obviously on a fitness drive, and he did reach the semi-finals of the International Championship, although he was a little bit reluctant to talk about that. It was a fantastic run. So from Mark Williams, a double UK champion, to Ronnie O'Sullivan, a quadruple UK champion, his last victory came in 2007, but after that amazing performance against Judd, against Judd Trump to defend his champion of champions, title people had high hopes for Ronnie coming here but just a few days ago he tweeted this picture of his injured ankle Ronnie had been out running in the forest near his house in Essex when he turned his ankle it turns out that it's actually broken but the guys here at break off had a bit of an idea they thought let's not focus on the ankle let's focus on the feet because somebody found out that there's such a thing as feet reading so we sent the picture off to Anne Scardarella thank you very much Anne from feetreading.co.uk to get some analysis and see if we could get some lowdown on the five time world champion by looking at two of the most famous feet in snooker the first thing i notice about these feet are the prominent tendons on top of the foot so here is someone who has had to overcome a lot of challenges. His broad, big toe also indicates that he says what he's thinking. He likes to have control of his life and to know what's going on. The little toe, which lies on its side, shows his adventurous spirit, a bit of a rebel almost. 
But that said, his private life and his family are very important to him and he looks to them before moving forward to take his next steps. Well, a fascinating insight there from Anne. I didn't really know you could deduce so much from someone's feet. I'm not sure what they'd make of yours or mine. But anyway, if you fancy having your feet analysed, then send us a tweet. Make sure you put the hashtag tweet your feet. And who knows, Anne could be doing an analysis of your feet. But we can't guarantee she'll be as nice about yours as she was about Ronnie's. Now, on to more serious matters, talking about Ronnie. It did turn out that that ankle was broken rather than sprained. An amazing effort to come here obviously in a huge amount of pain, beat Dan Wells, the former Paul Hunter scholar, six frames to two, but came into the press conference, Ivan, and left us in no doubt as to A, how much pain he was in, and B, how much doubt there is now about him coming back for his second round match against Peter Lyons on Sunday night. Yeah, I mean, in, in all the years <clears throat> that I've um, been covering snooker, I don't think I've ever seen Ronnie as gutted after a match as that, especially a match that he's won. He's obviously just genuinely really, really disappointed that he suffered this injury at a time when he said he was enjoying his snooker more than he's ever done. Um, as we alluded to yesterday, he played so well in winning in Coventry a couple of weeks ago and, and probably would have really fancied winning this one as well. So, <clears throat> and as you know, Rob, you know, an injury like that can take weeks or even months you know, to, to heal properly. So, um, yeah, of course there's doubt whether he'll play um, in Peter, against Peter Lyons in the second round. My guess is that um, having come here today and been determined to play and done so and got through it and won and actually played quite well, he'll probably do the same on Sunday night. But um, yeah, obviously a concern for Ronnie going forward. One man who never, ever gets knocked out of tournaments is the legendary Dutch referee Jan Verhaas. And we've set Jan a series of fairly unusual challenges, the first of which involved a head-to-head -head with the tornado. Two legends of snooker are primed here for a very, very important confrontation, but it's not out in the arena floor. We're here in the fabulous surrounds of the press office, and this is the challenge. You need to suck as many Maltesers as you can out of the box into your bowl in 30 seconds. Are you both ready? I'm ready. Drago? I'm not sure, but I'll try. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I haven't said I need yet. a start. He's been practicing all day. <laughs> That'll do. We'll, we'll allow that. Oh, this is actually quite close. Yeah, we'll allow that. 15 seconds. Oh, show <laughs> more. <laughs> right, okay. Oh. Here's a moment of truth. Drago, you were on fire. That was much better than the first take. One, I think we've two, got a winner. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine for Tony Drago, the tornado. And 14 for Jan Verhaas. You can eat them now. Well, Drago may have beaten Dominic Dale in his first round match and maybe up against Ben Wollaston this weekend, but it was no match for Jan Verhaas and we'll have more challenges for Jan later on in this championship. Right, let's finish off by looking ahead to the weekend's second round action. We've got from 128 to 64. We'll park the Ronnie O'Sullivan chat at the moment because we don't know whether he'll be there. There's no Ali Carter, but we do have some really intriguing matches. Ding Zhongwei against Jimmy White. Mark Williams is due a run and is coming into some form. John Higgins is in the second round and we haven't seen his best yet this year. Who's standing out for you in this uh, early stage? I think that match between Ding and Jimmy on Saturday is, is going to be fascinating. I mean, Jimmy probably feels like he's got nothing to lose having got through the first round. Um, it's, a, you know, it's a chance for him to have a crack at one of the sort of top four players. Um, most people are probably expecting to win quite easily, but um, Jimmy will just really enjoy it. And let's just hope it's a, it's a close match and a good one. I'm sure it will be. The crowd will be more than playing their part every time Jimmy comes out. He's a, 
he's forced to do the fist pump uh, to acknowledge so many uh, so many supporters. But we'll have to leave it there for break off. We started with 128. We're now down to 64. The television cameras begin to roll at lunchtime on Saturday, and that's when the nerves begin to jangle just a little bit more. The final word of tonight's programme is once again going to the tornado, Tony Drago. This is what's required if you're going to start the day with a breakfast of champions. Tony, can you say what you had for breakfast so he can check the levels? <laughs> two fried eggs, two sausages, three bacon, 38 mushrooms. Okay. okay. <laughs> What are your specials? What are you after? Oh. We got burgers, cheeseburgers, fries, fried onions, pickled onions, pickled eggs, pasties, pies, and odds. Odds? Yeah, we got first to score, half time score, final score, score draw, five to four, and a cracker nap. Everybody dance now! Sorted. Got any tips? Yeah, go easy on the air, Jill. Download the Coral app and check out our in play specials. But please bet responsibly.